What's up guys? So someone asked me about marriage and how to work with interfaith marriages. So let's talk about that today. So marriage is a tender subject. Um, especially if you're talking about interfaith marriages, whenever both of you don't believe the same thing, and how is that going to work out? So there. So first off, let's go into a Hellenic marriage. Some ideas of you're getting married as a believer in the gods, and how do I incorporate that into my wedding and marriage? So there, as the actual wedding itself, there are some gods that I can personally recommend. So traditionally, Artemis would be involved because young maidens would cut their hair, a lock of their hair, and offer that to Artemis as she protects those maidens before marriage. And obviously then you got Hera, um, she is the goddess of marriage, and one to pray to for the sanctity of marriage. Then you got Hestia, who is the goddess of the home, and then you have Zeus, who is the king of the gods, obviously. So... Those are the ones just I could think off the top of my head to include in your wedding vows if you want to make it a Hellenic wedding. Now, dealing with interfaith marriage whenever you guys both don't believe the same thing, that's a whole nother ball. So with that, I had a friend that was actually, she's not Hellenic, but she had a marriage and a wedding that was very nice that had no mention of... Uh, gods or god and speaking another one a big one i forgot to mention about including with Hestia, um artemis zeus and hera obviously aphrodite as well i just want to throw that in there and not leave aphrodite out of that but going back to the subject um yeah my friend got married and she had a very nice wedding where it had nothing to do religious other than having a pastor there was no prayers there was no um anything religion related so that's what I would probably recommend for those that have family especially coming in and you don't want to risk offending those that don't know that you're polytheist pagan or X Y and Z there are there are plenty of weddings and um, you can look up, look them up online on Google you can Google it and uh, plenty of ceremonies that don't involve involve religion of any kind and that's always the safest way to get married or you can if you guys are openly pagan and if your spouse is okay with it you can also there's some, that opens up a lot more that I can talk about right so now. So another idea is to incorporate both if you guys have liberal families and they're cool and they know what you believe you can honor your gods and then let your spouse honor their god or gods and make it that way and then there are some wiccans i've been to wiccanings and or should say um, hand fastings where um they would honor their particular gods though it like say that your god was apollo that you never really had any relationship with anyone than apollo then they would have a prayer to that god for example and then on the other hand have a prayer to apollo and then they would have one for zeus or thor or whoever so there's just many options, and it's all up to um, your family and uh, what you think if they attend and who's attending your wedding. But and like I said, the safest route is obviously going with a wedding that has nothing to do with deity, and it can be just as nice. And um, in turn, and, and like, like I said, it was really it's a really nice one. Now, when it comes to interfaith marriage itself, that's when it becomes real sticky. It takes a lot of trust and respect of the other person's religion. And it's also dependent on how religious the other person is. Because traditionally, a religion, someone that's very strict and 100% believes what their religion is taught and what they believe, sometimes oil and water don't mix. No matter how much you want to make it work in the end, there's going to be a lot of fighting and conflict. So you have that extreme of, because some religious texts are against interfaith marriages in the first place. That They're going to want you to convert or they are going to um, really make it uncomfortable. 
Like they'll seem okay now, but you can tell either by the mocking or the jokes or just the attitude when it comes up that that will eventually be an issue. If they don't, because people do change and eventually you guys will get comfortable into the point where the guards will fall down and either you will join, we'll say join their side for lack of a better term, or they um, may continue just to keep on nagging and teasing or even judging you. So you need to really seriously look into this before we go into that step of marriage. Because people may change, but a lot of the times it's only for a little while before it becomes an issue. And like I said, religion is a very important one. And if you guys cannot, you guys really need to think about that seriously now. And see how much religion, their spirituality means to them and to you before you step into marriage, especially if kids are involved, because it becomes a whole big mess. It's a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing. Um, yeah, it's no joke. It's There's already going to be fighting and arguing, and when you get to the, um, I mean, no one's going to 100% always agree, so when it comes to something as serious as a religion or spirituality, that's definitely something. And sometimes, like I said, oil and water won't mix no matter what you do. So interfaith marriages with religions, it's all depending on how much you respect and respect the other person's religion and how much you take yours seriously. Because if you're orthodox, straight, strict, it's not going to work. Because it's uh, the Bible, well, well, we'll just flat out say it. The Bible, for example, is completely against interfaith marriages. Um, I forget what the quote is. It's like uh, unequally yoked is what they like to say. You can't some you cannot be uh, married to someone of your that's not of your faith. It's dangerous, is what it teaches. So, like I said, if they're that strict and they hundred percent believe that, then it will cause issues in the future. They'll either convert you, or try to, or someone someone's gonna win if there's no um, equality in the relationship, and that is a big one. So, things to think about in all seriousness, guys. Anyway. Um, there you go. So some ideas for weddings, some ideas um, how who to incorporate, and when you get married, what the real truth of life of it is something that will be um, an issue with that is a stumbling block and something to think about. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Hope this helped a little bit. And um, before you ask, when I got married, I was still in. Eh, I wasn't Hellenic or. or um, I was pagan, but to make the family happy and not question anything, we kind of did the traditional wedding before you ask, how did I get married and what did I do? But that was also almost 10 years ago, so life's changed since then. Anyway, guys, I hope that's helped, and um, yeah, marriage is something serious to think about. Yep. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.